humankind has always striven to understand, organize, and classify God's creations. Biomes, communities of common plants and animals, are a way to divide the regions of the Earth into easily recognizable sections. Let's explore two contrasting biomes, the frigid tundra and the scorching desert. Although very different from each other, these two biomes are set apart from other biomes by their extreme conditions. Come along as we learn about two of the harshest climates on the planet. Located in the Northern Hemisphere, just below the polar ice cap, lies the coldest biome in the world, the Arctic tundra. This desolate-looking biome remains snow-covered for a large part of the year, and because of the tilt of the Earth, it spends almost two months in complete darkness during the winter. The tundra is characterized largely by the presence of permafrost. This is a thick layer of frozen ground covered by a thin layer of soil. Like its name suggests, permafrost remains frozen, even in the summer, and very little can penetrate its icy depths, including tree roots. These vast fields devoid of trees earn the tundra its name, stemming from the Finnish word tunturia, meaning treeless plain. The seemingly barren expanse of tundra stretches across many countries and states, including Russia, Iceland, Greenland, Canada, Scandinavia, and Alaska. During the long, dark winter, the average temperature remains well below freezing, and in the short summer, the temperature only rises to a level just above freezing. The tundra receives surprisingly little precipitation, mostly in the form of snow. When the summer sun finally melts the snow, the tundra often becomes a boggy swampland. Even water cannot penetrate the deep permafrost, and so it sits on the surface, gathering in pools and puddles. Although in the winter the tundra may appear desolate and sterile, in the summer it comes alive. Everywhere fields of green bloom with bright blossoms of yellow and purple and red. Vegetation in this biome tends to be small, with shallow root systems anchored in the thin soil above the permafrost. Although it varies by location, mosses, lichens, liverworts and grasses are common offerings, growing together in small groups or clumps close to the earth. They must take advantage of the long daylight hours to grow quickly. Haste is appropriate as the growing season will only last for a few short weeks. As you might expect, the abundant plant life attracts hungry Arctic animals, including ground squirrels, lemmings, voles, caribou, and the Arctic hares. In turn, these animals are soon followed by their predators, wolves, foxes, and polar bears. It is also common to find a full complement of birds, ranging from ptarmigans, geese, and loons, to the majestic snowy owls. A few of these animals live on the tundra year-round, while others hibernate during the cold winter, and still others migrate to warmer climates. Humankind, too, has found methods of adapting to the intense cold and short summers in this hostile biome. Although it remains the least populous biome, scientists estimate that around 4 million people call the Arctic tundra their home. Now, we will leave the snow and permafrost behind us and travel to another biome, equally extreme but radically different than the frosty tundra. We go now to the much larger desert biome. The word desert originates from the Latin word desertum, which means abandoned. This seems fitting as the word desert often conjures up images of sand dunes 
baking beneath a blistering sun devoid of plants or animals. In reality, the desert biome covers one-fifth of our planet and can be found in both hot and cold climates. In fact, the largest desert in the world is in Antarctica. So, if a desert biome is not determined by its temperatures, what makes a desert a desert? The tundra is characterized by its permafrost, but a desert is distinguished by its rainfall, or rather, by its lack of rainfall. To earn its designation, a desert must receive less than 25 to 30 centimeters of rain per year, and some receive much less than that. Because of this lack of moisture, desert plants need special adaptions to allow them to survive where other plants would wither and die. Of course, the first plant that comes to mind when considering the desert is the distinctive cactus. Cacti store water in their waxy stems and have traded their leaves for protective spines in order to limit water loss. Other desert plants, like the prickly creosote bushes, develop extensive and shallow root systems, ready to absorb as much water as possible during the infrequent storms. Some unique plants, especially wildflowers like the desert paintbrush, lay dormant in the desert sun until a single rainstorm allows them to germinate, grow, and reproduce, completing their entire life cycle in an extremely short amount of time. These type of plants allow some deserts to bloom and come alive after a rainstorm, appearing uncharacteristically green and colorful while the water lasts. Desert animals have adapted to this extreme biome in their own way, usually by changing their behaviors. Most deserts are unable to support large mammals. While you may catch an occasional glimpse of a coyote, sheep, or peccary, it is much more common to see smaller animals like mice, rats, or jackrabbits. The presiding animal life of hot deserts are typically reptiles, including lizards, snakes, and tortoises. The majority of these desert dwellers are nocturnal, active at night and sleeping during the heat of the day, frequently in underground burrows. Some animals have unique features that allow them to function in extreme heat. The black-tailed jackrabbit, for instance, has multiple blood vessels running through its thin, upright ears. The blood in these vessels is cooled by the wind and then circulated through its entire body regulating the rabbit's temperature. While at first glance a desert may seem unsuited to humans, the desert biome is actually the most populous, with over one billion people calling it home across the world. In the desert, just as in the tundra, life has found myriad ways to adapt to the harsh climate and severe temperatures. Whether it's the frigid bite of the Arctic tundra or the scorching heat of the arid desert, there is something irresistibly captivating about these extreme biomes.